Joining us for more on this is uh, Chidi Apulezi, the co-founder of Wakoma and head of the entrepreneurship faculty at uh, ALU, the African Leadership University. Chidi, definitely a pleasure speaking to you. We spoke yesterday and um, uh, we were in the room with brilliant minds, of course being challenged as well, but we were there to challenge them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the general sentiment around it is the new age generation now understands uh, the projections for business or economies on the African context. Mm -hmm. But the linkage between the traditional legacy systems of studying and getting that to practice is something that we haven't mapped out uh, from different demographics. The older people may be other ones who've always been at the helm of things. Right. So guide us through how we're seeing that shift in mindset. Well, so thanks for having me. Uh, it's always awesome to be back in Kigali. Uh, so this is a very fundamental uh, question that the ALU School of Business mm -hmm. is, is tackling, right? So I went to business school. I went to business school at one of the best universities in the world, right? And, and when I went to business school, the focus was on making me a great manager, right. right? How do I become a great boss? What ALU is doing is saying, we don't need great managers. We need great problem solvers, right. okay? We need people who are looking at the fundamental issues going on in Africa and using problem solving frameworks, heuristics to say, you know what, this is how we solve these right. things, right? And one of the things that we do is to say, it's not just entrepreneurship, it's being entrepreneurial. So you can be, not everybody can be an entrepreneur. Mm. You know, sometimes there's, I'll say today, you, you kind of see where everybody thinks I should quit my job and become an entrepreneur. Right. Well, that stuff is hard. We know how many people have tried and two weeks later they come back, <laughs> right. right? Because it's very difficult. So there are people who can be entrepreneurs. The founder of, of ALU is Fred Swanica. He's a pure entrepreneur, right? right? This is a man that blazes through uh, obstacles. And that is what we are trying to kind of import in there. But one, one thing that I am also focused on with the school is to say, also be entrepreneurial. Right. So if you are a manager, be an entrepreneurial manager. If you are a politician, be an entrepreneurial politician. Right. You are solving problems. That's what we're here to do. Uh, right. I, I just want to come in here. Right. Chidi, um, I understand that you've mentored several entrepreneurs in the United States, the other part of the world, but also done this massively on the African continent. These entrepreneurs we just yesterday have gone through your hand, you know. You know? Um, give us a sense of idea of what you see is lacking with African entrepreneurs vis-a-vis -vis what you've seen on the other side of the world. Well, you know, look, it's, it's pervasive across the world. Look, in Atlanta, uh, where I've done some mentorship of startups and, uh, you know, you see the same thing is getting away from, hey, I have a solution. You know, I've built an app because everybody comes to you. I'm sure you guys have heard I've built an app to, you know what, we've discovered a potential big problem that people have and we are developing a solution to that problem. That's, that's the gap that everybody has to cover. So, for instance, with the students, uh, the MBAs yesterday, when we started the class in March, many of them started with solutions. I already know, I am, I'm a big deal. I know what's going on in my country. So I know what the problem is. So I already have a solution to it. By the time we were done with the ALU School of Business, they discovered that there is significant work that you have to do to discover what the problem is and make sure there's enough people that have the problem. Because sometimes you think, okay, my dad has a problem, my family has a problem, that means everybody has a problem. That's not true. In order to solve fundamental problems, you have to make sure that there's a critical mass of people who have that issue, right? And then when, when you actually discover them, are they willing to pay you for your solution? So how do that? Yeah. So let's have a case in point. Um, well, just to tie into what uh, Maggie was asking. Um, so yesterday we had, one of the students had a solution for Tanzania. Um, it was a technical workshop, and uh, basically they were saying they want to have less theory, more practice, because mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But she said that the reason why it was not implemented within the curriculum in Tanzania is because the government had not approved it. Right. Now, within the African context, we know policy is right. king and the government Absolutely. is king, and we have that running the public sector, running right. most uh, that right. the private sector executes. So we know there's no one-size-fits-all for policy, right. but uh, how do we work around conversations such as that? You know, th that's why, for me, when you have a school like the AOU School of Business, it shouldn't be just executives or people who are interested in business that should attend these kinds of curriculums. There should be people who are interested in public policy that understand that you know, business and uh, public policy go hand in hand, right? right? That, you know, when you talk about the developed nations, think about how the business lobby makes sure that they have the infrastructure and the policy and all the ecosystems in place to enable them to push forward. Yeah. And that's what we need to do here. 
in, 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 on the continent. This is a Pan-African issue. This is not, some countries have done it better than others. You know, Mor uh, Mauritius, Rwanda, you start a business 30 minutes, you've registered your business, right? right? There's some countries, literally, you might, you're, you might even have a baby while you're waiting to get your, your, your registration. Right. And so we have to get to a place where we can just facilitate this stuff easily, but also educate the policymakers to say there's no reason for this stuff to be difficult, or there's, there's no reason for this stuff to be so hard for our entrepreneurs in order to, they, they're trying to solve problems. Right. Don't create more problems for them to, to, to have to handle. Let them solve the problem that they've started the business to, right. to solve. S still on entrepreneurship, but I want to <coughs> shift the conversation a bit. You've been a strong, uh, can I call it advocate of creativity right. uh, at the far front of uh, driving Africa's economic yeah. growth. Yes. You know, just give us an idea. W why do you strongly believe in this? So, I, as a founder of Okoma, we have focused, ruthlessly focused on the content creator, the creative entrepreneur. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, my co-founder is Zane Virgie, world-renowned uh, uh, journalist and, and content creator herself. And the reason the two of us have really felt like this is something that has to be handled is that look at Africa on the global stage. We all know that the stories around Africa are what they are, right? Poverty, corruption, disease, war. But if you, if you also notice all the other countries and developed nations have this PR machine, yeah. that PR machine is their creative industry. Yeah. And, and that's why everybody wants to go to America. That's why people are flying to other countries, because that PR machine has positioned their countries as these places that you want to come to. That we, we are a great people, we have problems, but we solve our problems. Africa hasn't really put forward the right types of ecosystems, infrastructure, right, and situations to enable our creatives, our content creators to tell the stories that show Africa the way it should be. So, you know, it's a no-brainer. In fact, I always say that the most important person in Africa is a storyteller. Right. The most important entrepreneur in Africa is the cr creative entrepreneur, because they tell the stories. They shape the narrative, okay? They are the PR machine. They define Africa's soft power. Right. And without soft power, we can do whatever we want. We can go out there and say, hey, you know, we're, we're doing this, we're flying this, we're creating this. But as long as our soft power, when people look at us in a very primitive way, because our stories are not told the right way, then there's, there's nothing for us to do there.